Normally, I don't ask for help, but today we have a situation. Every time you come to my channel and watch one of my videos, I get a small fraction of a penny. It helps me do what I do. What you don't know, though, is that I've been saving up those small fractions of a penny, and we have $75,000 to do something cool with. I say we because it's your views and your pennies that we're working with. And you might be asking yourself, hey Jerry, having an extra $75,000 doesn't seem like much of a problem, but it is. Let me introduce you to my uncle who can explain a bit more. Hey, so how's it going? <laughs> good? <It's> good. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think everyone can tell we're related uh, based on the haircut. Do I snap or not? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things we say first, but let's get started. What am I, why am I holding this? <laughs> My desk has some weird things on it. <laughs> My hands are just like wandering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Philip. He came to school here in the US about 15 years ago and was hosted by my grandma. And ever since then, he's been coming to all of our family reunions, New Year's parties, weddings, all the important events, and I've known him most of my life. I was born in Kenya, born and raised. I came here in America about 15 years ago um, to go to school. One thing that I've noticed being here in America is how easy and accessible knowledge is. And this is in terms of um, libraries uh, and books. As you all know, knowledge is power. And especially if you, if you think about the three basic needs, which is food, shelter, and clothing, the more knowledge you have, the more you're able to take care of these basic needs easily for yourself and also for your community. You've heard me say several times on my channel that education can solve all of the world's problems. And education comes with knowledge. Knowledge is permanent. Once you have knowledge, it cannot be taken away. It stays with you forever. Which is why we have the exciting news that part of the $75,000 that you guys have given us by watching our videos is going to be used to build a full-size library in Kenya. So we've been working in this process behind the scenes for about one year now, and we're pretty far along uh, in the process. Getting the land and building the library is going to cost us right around $50,000. That $50,000, though, goes a really long way, and this is the footprint of the library that's currently under construction in Africa. The library is being built in Budalangi, which is where I'm from. Um, it's going to be the only library within a 100-mile radius. It'll be utilized by 10 elementary schools, six high schools, and three colleges, and, of course, the community, which is around 7,000 to 10,000 people. 10, 000, yeah. So this is going to be a hub of knowledge within a walking distance. So instead of going all the way to 100 miles distance, it's going to be in the community and everyone will get access to it and it will just be amazing. It's exciting. The part you see in yellow is going to be the library itself and the part in pink behind me is going to be an enclosed outdoor reading area. Things are moving super quick. We've already started construction over in Kenya and I'm sure you've done the math in your head at this point. We started with 75, the library costs 50. We have $25,000 left to fill it up with books. But $25,000 is also the price of building an industrial borehole for a water well that would also service the entire community. It'll have a massive water tank and solar panels on the top and kind of make the library a meeting place or a central hub for people to come hang out. You can't really learn when your basic needs are not met. And so right now, we'll have the library and we'll have the borehole, but we're not going to have books inside the library. Which is where you guys come in. You guys have already given us so much by watching these videos. All of this is being made possible and construction, like I mentioned earlier, has already started but we need books. Down in the description of this video, there's an address in Orem, Utah, where we'll be collecting books to send to Kenya to fill our library, but not just any books. Think of your favorite book growing up, the one that kind of shaped who you are today. Not the keto diet book on your shelf that you've never read, but actual fun, entertaining, uplifting books that you really enjoyed reading. So most kids in, in Kenya they first get access to books when they're in school, so the first day of school, which is six years old. This library will provide an opportunity for these kids to, to start 
reading and, and learning about books at the age of two all the way to six. So we'll have programs like nursery rhymes and reading and all those kind of things that you do that helps you transition to go to elementary school more prepared. It'll start them young because knowledge is power and it's nice that, you know, books don't require batteries. So English is one of the national languages in Kenya. But in schools, English is the main language taught. Uh, thanks to the British, uh, this has been going on for the last 100 years. It's a long story, but we can, <laughs> uh, we're not going to get into it right now. But in schools, everything is taught in English. So having books that are in English really help just push this advancement of knowledge to the kids. Because this is a community library, we want everything. We want baby books, children's books, novels for teenagers. We want textbooks, encyclopedias, educational research books, everything. The books I read growing up shaped who I am today. Not so much grandma's cookbook. We don't need any of those. There's a quote that says, a reader lives a thousand lives, and a man who doesn't read lives only once. Sending books here to Orem, Utah is actually pretty cheap. USPS has a service called Media Mail, which sends books cheaper than other packages. So make sure you ask for Media Mail when you go to ship your books, or you can just order something directly from Amazon or other online book retailers and send it to us to the address in the description. So to fill up the whole library, we need about 12 to 15,000 books. We've already started the process of construction, and we're hoping that will be done by the end of the year. We have government approvals for the import of the books. We really have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, but now it's your turn. We really don't have much time since it takes a while for international shipping, which means we really need all of the books here in the next three weeks. It would be really embarrassing if we opened a library that had no books. books. Philip and I will both be down there in Kenya for the library opening, and you can see all of your books on the shelves once we have them. So the idea of a library has been a dream of mine for, for quite some time now. And I've had the privilege of getting a formal education by being here in, uh, in America. And so with your help, we can turn this around and provide the same knowledge to the people in my community. And this is going to cause a, a, an infinite ripple effect because we'll have books in the library and people can come and access them. And this knowledge is going to stay there for generations to come. Thank you very much. Um, for your help and we're hoping that this is going to be a success. I'm looking forward to this one and it's all been made possible because you guys are watching our videos from the construction of the library to the borehole now to the books. So send those as soon as possible. We have a very tight timeline to finish this before the end of the year. So if everything goes smoothly, by the end of the year we will have a full-size library up and running in Kenya. I'm excited. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks still for watching and we'll see you around at the end of the year.